What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to some 7 Days to Die. One of my favorite aspects of 7 Days to Die is without a doubt the base building and the Horde Knights. I absolutely love the defense element of the game and today I wanted to kind of share what I think is kind of a foolproof starter base that can be built by really any player for successful Horde Knights, several Horde Knight cycles with a very low investment cost. There is a lot of incredibly good base builds out uh, being shared by various members of the community and other content creators, and this takes ideas from several and kind of combines it all together into my own fashion. Now, as you see, we are going to be starting off here with 1500 wood. Uh, we're going to get this entire base design done and built with the 1500 wood. Of course, we're going to have to start off with some building blocks. So let's go ahead and craft say 150 building blocks to get things started and i'll kind of go over the basics of the design now this is going to be an early game starter base so with that in mind uh, we're going to assume you don't have any ranged weapons or guns and you certainly don't have a ton of ammo so with that in mind we want to build a melee killed box uh, this little uh, horde base will work with any melee weapon uh, however it really really shines with spears so I'm going to be using this guy right here, a stone spear, completely unmodded. And in addition to this, while these building blocks are crafting, this will be a long video as I want to cover all of the information. So I will include chapters and timestamps below. Uh, feel free to skip on forward to any parts you are already comfortable with in your design. Now this is going to be a variation of the long running hatch hallway, uh, which a lot of people will already know about. Uh, the basic uh, thought of that is we are going to create, let's see, let's go uh, one, two, three, four, five. We'll go about that long. We're going to create basically a little corridor, corridor that we're going to be able to hide inside when the horde base is coming. But we're going to add to this to make it cover a few basic rules. Now, this one we will be able to complete with this 1200 wood, and it is going to be completely overkill for most players. Uh, so you don't really need to go to this extent, but if you do a box like this, it is going to make your Horde Knights super, super smooth. So we've got a little hiding area here. One of the basics of base building is Seven Days to Die is the kind of 11 tile rule. And that is when an enemy is damaged and drops down and is within 11 tiles of a player, there will be some issues. Now, what this issue is, is they're going to go into a rage mode and just start destroying everything. Now, obviously, if your base gets destroyed around you, that's going to be a problem. So with that in mind, we're going to start this entire design off by going 11 or actually 12 tiles up to make sure we are one within that range. So let's go ahead and start off building up. Now this is the start to the structure. Uh, we've got 12 tiles up. We've got two different columns. Uh, now we're going to want to go ahead and give ourselves a way to climb up and a way down. Because uh, we don't want to be breaking any legs or having any, um, you know, any nastiness occur to us. Why we are building our base. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and swap over to scaffolding ladders. Uh, of course, we want to give ourselves two tiles at the bottom. That way we can jump up to our ladder. However, enemies will not be able to use the ladder. So we're going to go ahead and build this all the way up to the very top. Now, once we got our scaffolding ladder built up, we can now go ahead and do our other two columns. And this is going to give us basically a way up and a way down without having any uh, nastiness happen with uh, any sort of broken limbs or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get our other two columns up. Uh, once again, 12 blocks. Uh, we're going to be standing on the 12th block, which will put us well outside of a safe range for any baddies that are going to aggro down underneath of us. So we're a little bit high there. Uh, let's go ahead and create a just full platform. And here we go. Now, of course, we want to give ourselves 
a little bit of coverage. Now, um, we're going to have to put one more scaffolding ladder in uh, right here on the platform now that we got it started as we're not going to want to, uh, or we're going to want to be able to get to the very top of our structure, but we're not going to want to, uh, you know, we're going to want to have easy access in the middle. So we'll just add one more scaffolding ladder right there, which will allow us to easily access a doorway. Now that we got that done, we're going to go ahead and go three blocks high all the way around. Uh, something along the lines of uh, this. Let's see. We'll go three, three. Uh, we need to get uh, some more in over here. Actually, we I derped one there. We'll have to get rid of that block. Let's go ahead and go three here. And then we'll go uh, straight across and enclose all of this in. Now, you can take this one step further, and uh, you can take it one step further by adding in a little additional protection up top. Now, we're going to want access to this roofing area. Uh, so, of course, once again, we're back to our scaffolding ladder, and we are going to take that all the way up. So, we now have access to the roof. Uh, what could we add in to assist this? Well, the easiest thing to do... Uh, you know, actually we'll do that at the end once we get another, or, or kind of the full picture of what we want this bad boy to look like. Okay, so now we've got our little hidey hole, but how are zombies going to get to us? Well, we need to provide that area. So let's go ahead and go on down and provide a, a little easy access area where zombies can get to us. So let's give it like, uh, say five blocks, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, of course, we are going to be 12 tiles up, so we want to make sure we are going at least 12 tiles up. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, so we're now 12 tiles up, and we want to find a way to connect this. So we're going to, you can really use any block you want. The important thing to note is that zombies are going to, they recognize basically any block you build as a pathable source. Uh, with that in mind, we can go something like this uh, 0 0.025 pillar. We're going to want to change it so that we're using advanced facing. Let's get it right to the very top. And that is going to now give us access or a way for the zombies to get over to us. Actually, looks like I was only 11 tiles there, so let's go up one more. So we've got eight blocks left. Uh, we're going to have to make a few more. This is the basics of the structure, though. So we've got um, a way for zombies to climb up, which we haven't put the ladders in yet. And then additionally, uh, a way for them to access us. So let's go ahead. Uh, let's get a few more of those building blocks made. Let's say uh, let's just go 50 more for now and see if that is going to be enough for us. We're going to want to fill in all of this side area with something like this. And then additionally, we're going to want to craft a door and three hatches. So if we go ahead and make a door, this, of course, is just wood. We're going to make one of those and then we're going to make some wood hatches. So let's go ahead and go with three of those wood hatches. Uh, we got those crafting up now. Our door, I think, uh, you know, obviously it's just going to go right here. This is going to give us access in and out um, where we can close it and we don't have to worry about like ranged mobs throwing at us or any flyers coming down and getting to us. And then we've got our hatches. Now, our hatches are going to be what separates us from the zombies. But first things first, let's give these zombos a way up. So with that in mind, we're going to want to come over and add in those scaffolding ladders once again, and that will give zombies a way to get up to us. So let's get it, uh, get those added in. Uh, these are going to be full on zombie friendly, so we want them to be able to climb. Now, I'm going three wide just for redundancy, so if one of these ladders get busted, there's not going to be any issue with zombies still having a path up to us. You never want to completely remove the zombies path as no matter what, they're just going to start aggroing and smashing things. And, uh, you know, that's going to be that's going to lead to some unnecessary nastiness. So let's go ahead and path this all the way up. Now, one important thing to note is as you get a bunch of dogs added into the mix, 
uh, a lot of times dogs are going to have problems here, are not going to be able to get up the ladder, as you know, there's not too many ladder climbing dogs in the world. So when you get to that point, you're going to want to add in a stair going from one of the sides and leading up. Uh, additionally, you could just get rid of your scaffolding ladders in the middle and put a stairway coming straight down over here. That's going to allow uh, any dogs to easily path up to us. Now that we got that pathing in order, we're going to go back inside of our kill box here and we're going to get our hatches down. Now the green arrow, when you place a hatch, you want it being faced inside towards you and we're going to throw three hatches down. Now what this is going to do is as these hatches are opened, there the zombies are going to have to smash through the hatches to get to us. So. The general rule is here with two hatches open using any melee weapon, you're going to be in range of being able to hit the zombies. If you have three hatches open, you're going to be able to be in range to use a spear. Now, the important part with that is, of course, if you're two hatches open, the zombies are still going to be able to hit you. So with that in mind, you're going to want to pull your Mike Tyson and get a little bob and weave in there. And you're going to want to strike at zombies and then drop back, strike and drop back, etc. If you're going with the spear like I'm doing, then you can just stand here and wail away with no issues. So the basics of our kill box is done. Uh, we can add in a little bit of kind of overkill to it. And that is going to be giving us some sort of protection versus any zombies that might jump up and stack on top of each other. Of course, if zombies stack too high, they're going to get on your roof, and we don't want them getting up on the roof. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and swap once again to a different block. Uh, we're just going to go straight up with a ramp here for this one. We'll go to, um, I think we're going to have to go to our advanced placement again. And I done derped it. There we go. We want our ramp just like that. Now, uh, the sides are not really going to be necessary. Just with what you get right there is going to be sufficient. And that's going to give any zombies that stop or that jump on top of each other some sort of blocking to, uh, you know, avoid them being able to get up to the roof. Now that we've got all that built, our design is complete. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is completely overkill. This is the person that wants 100% protection with no chance of having any issue. This is the setup that you're going to want to use. Uh, however, you don't have to put it that high in the air, particularly for the first Horde Knight, if you don't anticipate any problems. Uh, additionally, once you do start getting a lot of dogs into your Horde Knights and you have uh, any issues with dog stacking, you can once again uh, access your handy dandy uh, shapes and go to a plate so if we just uh, search for a plate we're going to get one right there once again we're going to want to go to advanced placement and we're going to want to put that plate flat on the roof there we're just going to throw one of them there and eh, you know we can go to if we want why not that is all we're going to need now this gives us room to run through still but it is going to hinder any doggos getting up inside if they get lucky and make it over as dogs of course can come through just on the one tile so now we've got everything fully completed we uh still have a thousand and sixty wood left so with that in mind we're gonna want to upgrade this bad boy let's get this whole thing completely upgraded here and go on from there now here we are, we are all done. As you see, I've got four wood left. Uh, however, I don't even have all of these building blocks upgraded. Uh, I did upgrade one path up here, and then I didn't fully upgrade the entire thing here, as I wanted to make sure to stay below that 1500 wood limit. So with that in mind, we've got our Horde Knight approaching here. Uh, for full clarity, this is on Nomad difficulty with 16 enemies. Uh, I am using an unmodded stone spear at level 3, 
And then additionally, I've got just a primitive set of gear. I'm, uh, I am using a helmet light mod just for the sake of the video here to get a little bit more light going. Uh, however, besides that, I am fully unmodded. So let's go ahead and pop on up into our kill box and see how this Horde Knight goes. Uh, we're using our spear, so we can upgrade with three. Uh, you are going to want some wood for upgrades. We're only going to have four wood for upgrades as I want to get through this first Horde Knight with just that 1500 wood limit. Now here we go, the Horde Knight is starting. Now once again, the benefit of using all three hatches is it ch is a range check for you. The spear will reach, uh, they can't reach you. However, if you do go out here a little further, you're going to be able to spear these zombies a little further out on their little crossover beam there, which is going to make them fall off. Now, since we are following that 11 tile rule, and we're 12 blocks in the air, as zombies fall off, they are not going to go into that uh, destroy everything mode and start killing us. So we're going to sit here in the safety of our little base and start just plugging them in the head. Now, another benefit here, particularly if you have less than perfect aim, is you got your little headshot window here. Uh, you don't really have to worry too much. If you poke at them, you're going to headshot them most of the time with this setup. So we're going to continue to work it over with our little stone spear here. We might have to repair it uh, midway. But as you see so far, the first 30 minutes of Horde Knight has been just pretty darn easy peasy. So uh, making sure to back away since I'm at the two hatch limit. I do want to back away a little bit when the zombies start taking melee swings. And that will make sure that I'm not getting slapped. Uh, of course, uh, you know, you could potentially take some damage. Uh, if you stay up there in their range, I'm going to make sure to stay back. That way I don't have to sweat it. Uh, taking a look at our hatch, we haven't really taken much damage there yet. So we're in pretty darn good shape. Now remember as well, I'm using this stone spear. Uh, there's a real good chance, even if you're doing spear builds, that you're going to have an iron spear by now. As uh, we are on day seven... Uh, I wanted to make sure to just use more of the primitive weapons and armor just to show off, really, the power of the design. It just follows, you know, there's been some really, really good uh, Horde Knight base builders over the last many years of early access in Seven Days to Die. And this is taking a bunch of just the best ideas from all of them and incorporating it all together into kind of a uh, pretty foolproof Horde Knight zombie base. Now, uh, we are at uh, 11 o'clock now, so we're one hour in. It's progressing quite quickly. Now, with this design, the zombies do do a lot of looping, so they're going to fall off and run up quite frequently, which means we are going to go past uh, the 4 a.m. daylight time. Uh, we will have to sit here and kill all these bads uh, when we get to the end of it, which, uh, you know, should not really be an issue since we are in, in the safety of our little protective kill box here. Now we're coming up on midnight here, so we've got our almost our first hour, or first two hours, pardon me, complete. Uh, I haven't done any repairs yet. You see, I'm still at the four wood. I'm going to try to not do any repairs, just so you can see how much destruction happens to the kill box itself uh, through the course of it. Uh, we do have that safety, of course, as well as I'm sitting at two hatches. I can always back up one more hatch and open that one if that first one gets destroyed. But we're looking pretty solid so far. Everything is pretty smooth sailing. Just sitting here giving them some pokes. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the first hit and the zombie is just going to fall off. Of the little beam there you see it, uh, of course since i said something that guy got up which they do stand up here however the majority of the time they're just going to fall off and it's not really going to be an issue all right we do have to get a repair in on our spear uh, that's just going to eat a little bit of stone but we should be in good shape there uh, besides the spear though like i said i'm going to not or attempt to not do any repairs you see that front hatch has taken damage, but not an excessive amount at this point. A 
right, we're coming up on 2 a.m. now. So I did hear a little slapping going on down there. So some zombies did aggro to some blocks, uh, assuming we lost a few blocks underneath. Uh, we'll, of course, go down and check out all of the carnage after. And then, of course, since we just used the building blocks and uh, unupgraded building blocks, that, of course, uh, means that those probably got destroyed really, really quick just from a couple of slaps. Continue to poke away here until we get till 4 a.m. Completely safe. I've taken zero damage so far. Uh, so no infections to worry about, no broken bones, no damage to worry about healing through. And I've actually been at the second hatch, too. So just a matter of uh, backing up when you see the swing incoming. And winding down in the last 90 minutes, so... This will continue to go quite smoothly. You do get a nice little reprieve, so if you need to do any repairs or if you need to eat or drink, um, there's plenty of time to get that done as the zombies have to run the loop. You know, if they fall off of the little balance beam there, they, of course, are going to have to run back around, climb back up the ladders, and run back across, which gives you that nice little reprieve each time. Now, as you get this kill box upgraded, uh, even maxing it out and going at 64 zombies is just going to be a non-issue. Uh, you will want to have it fully upgraded and some additional wood on you to be able to make repairs. But just with uh, some slightly t uh, toned up settings, with it being uh, on the second, uh, the second difficulty, basically, uh, and just having the 16, that makes it a pretty chill experience with this overall design. Now, I personally have used this exact design all the way up until, like, Fortnite 28. I started to have some issues with it. Uh, one problem you'll start to have is when cops start showing up, uh, you, of course, are going to be taking a lot of range damage, and then additionally... Your little protective box is going to get beat up as well. Uh, with that in mind, uh, if you get a lot of cops, you're going to either want a ranged weapon to be able to take them down as soon as they get at the top of the ladder, or you're going to want to get your stuff upgraded a little bit here. If you stay with wood and you've got cops uh, constantly puking on you, it's, you know, without doubt going to cause some issues. Looks like we're probably going to end up losing that plate by the end of it, uh, but, you know, no repair so far, and it is still alive, so we're able to just sit here and keep on plugging away. Now, the range really is make, what makes, in my opinion, the spear so good. In fact, it's my favorite starting melee weapon in Seven Days to Die, just because having that little bit of extra range versus the other melee weapons is just quite the game changer for me. You know, I personally am nowhere near a pro and do not have the greatest aim in the world. I like to pretend like I can headshot things, but in all honesty, I miss quite regularly. And the spear is probably, if not the easiest, to just point and click for your headshots. It's up there pretty darn high. It's just real easy to land those headshots with the spear and makes it just perfect for me with the combo of that increased range and the ease of headshotting. So with a kill box design or a Horde Knight base design like this, it's all about the headshots. You're going to want to be using all power attacks. You're going to want to be headshotting enemies. And, you know, it's such a small window and their head is just right there. It becomes quite difficult, actually, to miss too frequently. Um, the zombies do like to bob and weave a little bit. However, overall, it's usually not too bad of an experience. We're level 14 now. I will go through the spec. Um, I did not use all the skill points. Uh, I just kind of put together some what I personally usually start my playthroughs with if I'm going spears. And I'll show you all what I use for skill points. Um, I think I didn't use like, you know, three or four of the kill points and or of our uh, talent points. Okay, so there we go. The Blood Moon is complete. Now all we have to do is clear house. 
Uh, of course, we can go out here and be a little bit more aggressive with clearing out the rest of these guys here. We could even just come all the way back on out and start uh, plugging them as they're coming up the ladder. Now, you see we did lose quite a few blocks. Uh, kind of the downside of not having upgrades in throughout. Now, we've only got one more down there, it looks like. It looks like we lost nothing on our main base. So, we lost a few of those upgrade unupgraded blocks. Uh, still plenty of, uh, you know, enough structural integrity to handle things. Of course, my spear would break right at the end like that. I guess I can just go ahead and repair my spear here. Be a quick repair with it being stone, and we can get out there and get that guy down. Uh, so you see we lost blocks on both sides. Uh, we had enough redundancy with our ladders where it was not an issue. In fact, it, does, it looks like we may have not lost any ladders. So, I mean, pretty darn effective for a starter uh, killing base or horde knight base uh, to get things going on your first horde nights. Uh, let's take out these last few. We actually have somebody roaming up on us uh, additionally. There we go. Get these last guys dealt with and then uh, then we can go through and take a full look. Oh, it actually looks like I got a wandering horde right at the end. Right at the end of my regular horde night. Go ahead and drink up and get some stamina. Let's get the rest of these guys blazed out. All right, our wandering horde is complete. Let's uh, check it all out. So what, we lost uh, two blocks right here at the bottom with those two ladders. And then it looks like we lost, what, three blocks up top. Now, obviously all this stuff wasn't upgraded, and that is... You know the issue if those weren't been upgraded they would have taken some damage uh as you see like this uh block only 100 hp so doesn't take much to break these things but pretty solid altogether. now as i mentioned i've used this this particular design all the way through like horde night 28 so what do you add in for the additional times well of course as i mentioned with dogs dogs can have a challenge climbing ramps uh, I think the thing to do here is to go ahead and get rid of that middle stretch of ladders and then make just a stairway going up. Do dogs, of course, can run upstairs, and that will remedy that problem. Now, additionally, one of the reasons we put in roof access was because we're going to get those pesky flying mobs during the Horde Nights as well. And we can just pop up here on the roof and throw down just a bunch of wooden spikes and it will completely automate all of the flyers. They'll come down, try to break through the roof to get to us, and the wooden spikes will just take them out. Almost forgot to go through the spec I used. As I mentioned, I don't have all the points applied as I wanted to simulate a lower overall level. Um, you see we're level 14, was it? Yeah, we're showing we're level 14 now after the Horde Knight. We have three extra points, so this is the equivalent of being level 11. Now, this is normally what I go to. As I mentioned, I'm a big fan of spears, particularly early in game. There's a few points I like to get into right away, though. I like to start working on Daring Adventurer as soon as possible, as even with the changes to the Trader Quest system, it is still an integral part of the game, and you just can't beat Daring Adventurer, which gives you two quest rewards for each of your completions, which also means when you get rewards for doing any of the challenges you're going to be able to pick two of them as well. So in my opinion, that is just absolutely huge. In addition to that, I usually like to go with one point into position just so I can get that splints and cast cure sprains instantly. Now, in addition to that, uh, parkour, I think everyone has said it for the last many, many years. Parkour is one of the most valuable things in the game. Being able to jump higher and fall from greater distances is just huge and parkour will get it done so i got one point into parkour uh in fortitude i went with one point into healing factor uh, i just like to have that fast or not necessarily fast but automated health gain so even just getting one health back every 35 seconds 
uh, it adds a little bit of quality of life there with not having to constantly use bandages or eat. And then additionally, cardio, you know, less stamina or increased stamina regen while sprinting, particularly early game, is just a huge thing. I normally don't put any points at all into the strength category to get things started. Of course, if you like to use those particular types of weapons, you're definitely going to want to go that route. And then I basically just go into spears. So I've got three points into spears, uh, the remainder into perception, just to be able to get high enough to unlock that third tier of spears. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe as there will be much more seven days to die content coming soon, including a community server for anybody that wants to play together. So thank you all once again, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.